I'm going to be doing something different for this video. Consider it part of my off-topic series, though it's not completely off-topic from furry, just my main line of how furry is it videos. Before we delve into this, I want to say this right now, I'm not going to be publicly shaming or condemning anyone in this video. I feel like it would be unfair and would go completely against my reasoning for making this video. I want to make this clear, this is not a call out. That's just what all I want to say right now. So let me ask you guys this. Why do furries tend to shame mersuiters? And there's a lot to unpack from that question, so I'm going to go into detail. So let's start with just recently, a furry YouTuber by the name of Odin Wolf uploaded a video talking about how in the past he made pornographic videos of him in his fursuit and with it placed a certain stigma on him when he decided to make YouTube videos instead of said pornographic media. This type of adult media featuring fursuits is referred to as mersuit or mersuiting specifically, though it falls under the general adult category of YIF, at least on certain video sharing websites. If you did not know, people don't take too kindly to associating with someone that does adult or pornographic things in fursuit for a number of reasons, but let's focus on Odin Wolf now, Odin has around 25,000 subscribers on YouTube, and he was also able to create a more PG or PG-13 branding to his image. I'm not going to say it's completely squeaky clean, considering he sells pillows with his character barely clothed on him uh, to his fans, but it's not mersuiting. But he has received criticism, and it's not from his content, it's not his production value. It's because he used to express himself much more sexually. And to some, that's very bad and damaging to the greater society, I guess. Here's the gist of the video he posted. I wanted people just, just to stop bringing up the Mersuit thing all of the time. Because they just use it as a way to cut me down and to invalidate everything I've worked for, like, already a year and some change on. Every day I get comments about they're just the shittiest comments on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter saying like F you you dirty mercy to you're a piece of shit. hope you die stuff like that and it's all the time and it's not cool I even had uh fellow furry youtubers one of them and before I say this I want to say I've I've talked to them about it and I don't hold it against them really but the, the comment will always stick out in my mind when they said you don't deserve to do well on youtube because you did mersuit videos that was like a dagger i <laughs> just invalidating everything i worked for just because of stuff i used to post it's kind of weird if you actually think about it right like people have sex or sexual feelings in general unless they're asexual and have no necessity or drive for sex it's pretty much given that you can interact and mingle in society just fine with the notion that you probably have had sex before or dirty thoughts or some sort of lust because sexuality is part of what makes us human it's based on our species survival it's a way for us to express ourselves to those we care to show it to you can be a successful business person or an excellent teacher and then make hot, passionate love to your spouse or partner as long as you don't flaunt it around like crazy, especially in front of kids. I know what you're thinking right now, and yes, I do understand that you don't want to be near a fursuiter that had just recently had sexy times in said fursuit. Even with partial fursuits, these type of costumes carry more odor and other bodily excretions. Sweat. I'm talking about sweat. I'm, I'm trying to keep this from becoming too crass, but what I'm trying to say is that washing or disinfecting your fursuit after use, whether getting exercise on a casual stroll through the park or in a Kama Sutra pose, is very important. It's a health and public safety thing, kind of like how washing your own body is important too. I feel like that's part of the negative stigma though, the fact that being anywhere near a mersuiter will get you an STD or a nose full of awful stink. You probably don't want to be around a fursuit in general if it smells awful, or if the person inside has been cooking inside of it for a while and perspirating like crazy. 
but I think people see a mursuit more like fetish gear than actual fursuit, which is why more tolerant furries prefer if mursuits just you know, stay in the bedroom, which is fine. But it's more than a safety issue, isn't it? It also has to do with the self-flagellating attitude that furries have towards adult media created from their own community. They know they're weird. They're a fringe group in society that unfortunately has a certain label based on mainstream media news reports, radio jockeys, certain TV shows. They've all perpetuated this thing that the whole furry fandom is all about sexual deviancy. As Quartz Husky points out, you see, they're not interested in bringing a sociologist or a statistician onto the show. That would be boring. They would rather have four people who are completely uneducated on the topic come in and yell at each other. Despite the fact that sociologists almost unanimously agree that the furry fandom is good for the people in it and that it's a healthy thing, these shows, in the pursuit of giving both sides a voice, end up paying pundits to spread misinformation and prejudice, and in doing so they end up misinforming their own viewers and harming the fandom. I would not compare this to actual racism or sexism, but the more people outside the fandom see our community as sexual weirdos, the more furries need to either try to stray from the stereotype and or develop this need to have a more family-friendly appearance to the outside public. Sometimes this ends up looking like kink shaming or outright harassing the weirder furries in the community. Some way to make oneself look better than those people. It's like a game of social rankings. And this is why I bring up kink shaming mursuiters. And oddly enough, you don't find this attitude as much when it comes to artists or writers in this fandom unless they involve some sort of niche fetish or kink or underage characters in their work. Not touching that. Fursuits are way more representative of our fandom in a number of ways. Like, you don't have to be a furry to draw fan art of a show with furry characters in it or write fan fiction of said anthro characters, but you have to be pretty furry to own a fursuit. If you go to a convention or any public space, the most defining feature of a fan at that convention is how they dress, what they wear, it's anything from a full-fledged handmade costume to a simple graphic tee. Wearing an animal shirt might be, you know, it might make you kind of furry if they know what furries are. Outside of that, it's just kind of a rad wolf shirt. But you can spot a full body animal costume and know it's either for a promotional event or they're a furry. Or both. Fursuits are held to a higher standard in a way. So seeing one that's vaguely or extremely sexualized and in an area that might be vacated by children and their families that sets people off. How dare that perfectly cute or cool costume come off as sexual? This is supposed to be a family-friendly fandom. Just don't visit E621. That's the not family-friendly website I don't want you to see right now. Public perception is extremely important to furries, it seems. The furry survey created by Adjective Species shows us that out of all the furries they surveyed, they see their own enjoyment or participation in the fandom as much less about sex than they see other furries and generally think people outside the fandom consider it a haven for nothing but sexual deviancy. While there is some truth to this, it unfortunately fuels this attitude where we as furries have to downplay our adult side, and there's nothing wrong with censoring yourself in the name of public appearance, but at times it comes off as too much, as with Odin Wolf being called out and having plenty of blood slung at him for previously being a mursuiter. To me, that's just bullying, and we should be better than that. Would you rather come off as a gatekeeping jerk that harasses and makes fun of people in your own community, or a bit of a kinky boy? That's just how I see it. You can have your own opinions on mursuits. Maybe you don't like them, maybe you don't care, but I would never encourage people to harass or bully within this community. I want to make something else very clear as well. At this point, as Quartz Husky has pointed out, we do not need the mainstream approval of our community. Most of these news channels, probably on cable news and such, they don't make money by giving more insightful stories. They want drama, they want action, they want sorrow, they want deviancy, they want controversy, they want the kind of drama that might end up having someone look bad. I know this. 
I've worked inside the broadcast media. Granted, it was just as an audio operator working on the little soundboard during the live segment parts, but I know how the news works because I've watched it enough. I would say more, but Quartz Husky pretty much sums it up pretty well. So go ahead and watch his video after this one because this is all I have to say right now. Just be cool with each other. Try not to be petty. Don't be bullies. We're all in this together. So I'm not sure how this video is going to turn out. I guess if you like it, go ahead and click the like button. If you have any comments about anything I've discussed in this video, maybe some insights you have, if you've been personally bullied for having some sort of sexual kink or some sort of fetish within this niche community of ours, maybe you're a baby fur or something, we can talk about it. This is going to be our little safe space. Unless a troll comes by. Don't worry, I'll, I'll take care of them for you. But this has been Lightning Runner with a sort of off-topic video. Be nice to your fellow furry, unless they're a Nazi. Then, um, I don't know, f them. And since you're still here, go ahead and check out my Patreon page. Patreon lets you pay creators like me directly through a monthly paid subscription, and if you're generous enough, you can even have your name in the credits before each review, or help me co-produce a review. I also have a special Discord server for my patrons, but you can also send me single donations through coffee. That's K-O-F-I. And as always, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.